Hi everyone and welcome back. If it's your first time here, I'm Casca and I like to make things. In today's video, I'll be making some autumn decorations. It's the beginning of September, which means it's officially the start of spooky season, my favourite time of year. I do have a costuming thing planned for Halloween, as well as some more autumn-y, cottagecore, everyday wear kind of stuff, but I'm waiting on some materials before I can start those projects. In the meantime, I feel like my shelves need to fit the time of year a bit better, so I'm going to do some decorating. I've already done a bit of rearranging, but I want to add some autumn leaves and make a bunch of pumpkins. I've also got some FIMO, FIMO, however that's pronounced, and I'm thinking I'd like to have a go at making some spooky pattern weights that can also be decorations when I'm not using them. Right, let's get started. Okay, so this is what I have got for the pattern weights. As you can see, we have a variety of colours of polymer clay. I've got some white somewhere as well and also some more of this one which is actually glow in the dark which I think that should be quite cool. For the actual weight part of it I got a ton of bolts because in my 21 questions video I mentioned that I did have some pattern weights. They were just little round discs probably actually around the same size as these. They don't do anything though. They, they're okay for say holding down the corners of some pattern paper when you're just drawing out a pattern but for actually holding down like a pattern on some fabric and cutting they're nowhere near heavy enough so I'm thinking each one of these bolts weighs about the same as the little discs. Maybe a little bit more than the little discs that I've got. So if I put a bunch of these in the middle and then sculpt my little pumpkins and stuff around them, theoretically that should give me enough weight for them to actually be usable. And if they do end up just being glorified paperweights <laughs> then I've got them as little decorations. I'm thinking I'm going to do six weights. It's a, it's a nice number. I'll see if I've got enough to do a couple of just regular just orange ones. Um, a gold one. Maybe combine the red and the orange and do some kind of swirlies. A glow in the dark one. Um, I'm also going to do a couple of skulls as well I think. Like I said, I've got some white somewhere and another two glow-in-the-dark ones. So yeah, I think I'll do one regular white skull and one glow-in-the-dark skull. Found the white ones and the other glow-in-the-dark ones. And yeah, I've, made, I've divided these up into six and seven bolts in each one. That's got some reasonable weight to it, so that should be good. I started off by making a small disc of polymer clay and then adding the bolts in the middle of that. I then got some snakes of clay and wrapped them around. It was tricky. It wasn't really sculpting the way I wanted it to and I was finding that I had like really harsh edges that I was finding hard to blend. So I went on a hunt for my sculpting tools and I found this method a lot better just making it into a big ball and using the tools to squish in the little indentations. Next I got some of the green polymer clay to make a little stalky bit on top. I ended up switching from the silicone tip sculpting tools to wooden ones because it turns out they're not actually made as well as I thought they were and the end kept popping off. So the wooden ones are a bit more sturdy. The issue with the wooden ones though is I was finding that the clay was kind of sticking to it so it was kind of staining it. 
So when it came to making the sculptures with the glow-in-the-dark clay and the white one, it was leaving little marks and like orange and stuff. I did also sculpt a white skull and a glow-in-the-dark skull, but reviewing the footage later on, it was not exactly in focus, so <laughs> I've left that bit out. Right, I've got a load of this fabric left over, so I'm going to make another one of these. Possibly two, depending on how much fabric I've got. I'm going to go into more detail this time and actually explain what I'm doing, because on the 21 questions, most of the actual construction was below the screen. So, this time, I'll show you what I'm doing properly. This is the idea I've got for the pattern. From the last one, I know that if I sew together, I might actually round this off a bit more. If I sew together the two pieces with this being the outside, then joining each piece like this one, then I should get the desired effect. I'm just going to cut off one end so that I've got a hole to stuff it and then pop this little bit on. I can actually show you this now because I realised that on the previous video when I held it up to the camera, depth of field is a thing. <laughs> It was a bit blurry, but yeah, I really like this fabric, it's really cute. I cut out all my pattern pieces and then got to work stitching them together. I then sewed up the hole in the middle and used some thick embroidery thread pulled tightly around each section to give that bulging out effect that I wanted. This is the pattern that I used to make this with last time. So all I've done is I've cut out some different sizes of it to fit this and the other little one. And then I'm going to cut some wire and put that in it with some stuffing so I'll be able to bend it into shape. In order to get this shape, I first drew out a hexagon to match each point of that and then I drew four bits coming off it and divided it up that way. Okay, so I've got these leaves and there's 150 so I should have enough. What I'm thinking I'm going to do is do a layer on, the, on each of the shelves and then maybe do like a circular pattern or something on the back, some sort of pattern and have some coming off like bunting. I think that should look quite nice. Fingers crossed I'll have enough leaves there.
This was a fun but also frustrating project. I'm super happy with how things turned out and every time I look at the shelves it makes me smile. Doing the fabric pumpkins was pretty straightforward because I've made one before and arranging the leaves was nice and simple. Where I ran into issues though was with the pattern weight. If I was going to do it again, I would wrap the bolts up in a layer of tin foil first to hold them in place and give them structure. It was so hard trying to sculpt, especially the skulls, without the bolts moving around or bashing an area that I'd already sculpted. I think a good base layer would help with this. So they don't look amazing. One of the skulls doesn't really look human, but they do function how I wanted them to. They look okay sitting on my shelf and they have enough weight to them to work as pattern weights. I might have a go at making some better looking ones at some point in the future, but I think I did pretty well not being a sculptor and trying to work around moving bolts. Over the coming weeks, I'm going to be gradually adding more Halloween type stuff to the shelves, so by the end of October it should be full spook. If you enjoyed this video and fancy giving it a like, it would be very much appreciated. I'm always open to your suggestions and constructive criticisms, so anything you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. If you'd like to see more videos of me trying to make things, then why not subscribe and hit that bell so you'll be notified next time I upload a video. I do my very best to upload a new video every two weeks. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye!